So many people do not realize just how expensive it is to run a horse farm and own horses in general. Hey horse lovers, welcome back to Free Spirit Equestrian. My name is Shay and in today's video, I'm gonna to talk to you about how much it costs me to run my working horse farm and how much it costs to just take care of the horses in general. I think there's a huge misconception that when it comes to owning horses, it's just hay and maybe a little bit of grain, but there is so much more that goes into this industry, especially if you do it the right way and take good care of your equines. Plus, there's so much more you have to add in if you're running any type of business. So I'm gonna go through all of my expenses in detail and tell you just how much my horses cost me each year. So on average, I usually own around 10 horses, give or take. So a lot of you know that my mission is to work with horses for one to five years, and then I eventually will find them a home. I also run a lesson program too. So that's why I have 10 horses on average. I usually always have just around 10. So we're gonna talk about all of my expenses and you're gonna get to see the breakdown today. This video has been highly requested, so I'm very excited to make it for you and let you see just how much everything costs. Like I said in the beginning, I also am running a business here. So there are additional expenses, but honestly, some of them you should just have in general, even if you just own horses. So let's talk about it. The first expense we're gonna talk about is hay. Oftentimes you'll hear people call horses hay burners because they think they eat so much, which they do. Horses are supposed to eat 24 seven. They are grazing animals. So hay burners is a little bit of a joke when it comes down to owning horses and paying for their forage. Here is some of my beautiful hay and we have it stacked in the law. I feed my horses both first and second cutting hay. First cutting doesn't have usually as much sugar or alfalfa, obviously, depending on your location or where you get your hay, that can vary. And second cutting is a little more rich. So I do about half and half when it comes to my square bales and my alfalfa and grass mix bales, so my second cutting. The hay prices change on a regular basis, so I'm gonna give you the overall total of what I pay for hay per year. Now, I also feed round bales and the horses are on grass as well, usually six to seven months out of the year but they always have a round bale too. So round bales, we get about, I don't know, I wanna say between 30 to 50 round bales each year. And we store the round bales in the back of the arena and we also have a barn up front that we'll store them in. Personally, I like feeding round bales because then I know my horses will have forage 24 seven. They go through the square bales so fast, but I think it's important to have all the squares for when they do have to go in the stall or whatever the case may be, traveling, all of that. But we literally go through all of our hay by the end of the year. My total cost for hay per year is $4,274. And again, my horses always have access to forage or grass pastures. So we do maintain our grass. That's why they're only on grass like six to seven months out of the year so that we can save them. So that does save a lot on hay because obviously if I didn't have them on grass, then hay would end up being around eight to 10,000 per year. So it does help that they can be on grass as well. We still will put a round bale out even when they are out on pasture, but they usually go through that really slow. Oh, there's Penelope, my pig. <laughs> they usually pick through that pretty slow because they'd rather be eating the grass. Penelope, you wanna say hi? Or are you just munching on the grain that's left over? Hello, you good girl? All right, you have fun. So we talked about hay, let's talk about how much my grain and my supplements cost me per year. Okay, so you see all of my grain here. I feed tribute, which I've talked about in a past video, but here is some of our haul from the month. And then I have all my supplements and stuff as well. Now, obviously I will feed different supplements for different reasons, so on and so forth. And I've talked a lot about nutrition and I've made videos regarding that. So this video is just specifically talking about how much it costs me. My total cost of grain and supplements per year is $10,011. So that's definitely a big chunk of change and I do not overdo it when it comes to graining my horses. I just made a video talking about how much I feed and exactly what I feed and I will link that in the description below, which by the way, you can still get your free bag of tribute if they haven't made it up to a hundred people yet. But yes, that is a huge, huge expense when it comes to horses. 
but I mainly feed grain because I want them to get their minerals and everything they need to support what they're doing because I do ride and work my horses and I want to make sure I'm taking really good care of them. All right, shavings. So here's the thing. I do not like to stall my horses unless I have to. So they do come in the stalls every day to eat or I'll rotate them between feeding them out in the paddock or in the stalls. Obviously, if they are injured, then of course they would be stalled or if it was horrible weather, whatever the case may be. But I want my horses to be horses and be outside as much as possible. So for us, the way we do things here at Free Spirit Equestrian, my total cost of shavings per year is $500. Now, I know a lot of barns that could be way higher because some barns stall their horses every night or they're a show barn, whatever the case may be. But I try to keep them out as much as possible because I want them to get movement. So shavings do not really cost us a ton in the scheme of things. Now we're going to talk about utilities, aka the electric bill. So all I'm having to pay for in regards to utilities, like I said, is the electric. So we have a well, which obviously it takes electricity to run that. However, the water is free. So I'm not paying for water out in the barn because we have a well. My total cost when it comes to utilities is $542 per year. So typically in the winter, our utilities are higher, obviously, because we're riding inside. We have the indoor arena. However, I really try to save energy. Anytime we're not in the barn, I turn the lights off. I make sure the tack room lights are turned off, the arena lights. When we walk to the outdoor arena, if we're riding outside, I really am a stickler about making sure all of the lights are turned off. I don't know. It's just maybe it's just one of my OCD things. Um, not trying to necessarily be a penny pincher, but I'm like, like, I don't really want the lights on if I'm not in here. So utilities really aren't too bad. Let's talk next about my farrier bill because that one is huge. So I have 10 horses on average, right? Most of my horses are barefoot. I usually will have one to two horses that have shoes on. And currently I have two horses that go in composite shoes and I'll show you them when we go out to the field because we of course are gonna see the horses. I have to show you them. So the composite shoes are definitely expensive but I absolutely love them versus steel just because they give more suspension, so on and so forth. But anyways, back to the money. So my farrier bill is huge. Per year, I pay the farrier $8,400. So it breaks down to about $700 a month, which when you sit back and think about it, like that's a lot of money, $700. So that is huge. And again, most of them are trims because I want my horses to be barefoot if possible. But also we do a ton of trail riding. We go camping like in different states, totally different areas where, you know, it can be rocky and you need hoof protection. And I just feel like boots rub like blah, 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 blah. Right. So $8,400 a year. So that is a little bit hefty and it's definitely one of my biggest expenses when it comes to running a farm. So in the winter, I will get my horses trimmed or reshod every about six weeks and in the summer, every three and a half to four weeks. So I try to never go to the full eight weeks. I just think that they need to be trimmed more often than that. But of course, obviously things can come up like maybe something was canceled or something major happened. But on the regular, it's every three and a half to four weeks and six in the winter just because their hooves do not grow as fast when they aren't on the grass because there's less sugar so yeah that is a huge huge part of my expense as you can see so far it is not cheap to run a farm and we're not even halfway through this expense list horses are definitely a labor of love and you know you have to work really hard in order to maintain them especially if you have them in any type of program whether it's you know just a program with another trainer or lessons or a certain discipline whatever the case may be it's a lot i'm definitely more so of a less is more type person when it comes to caring for my horses and what i mean by that is i try to make things as natural as i possibly can even though they're domesticated like obviously they're not in the wild in the wild they would roam 20 miles per day and of course i can't just make this the wild west out here right <laughs> but i want to try to do what i can within my power 
to just let them be horses and not bubble wrap them per se. I feel like I take really good care of my horses. I'm always monitoring them. I'm always trying to research and do what's best for them and each individual horse. But at the end of the day, I want them to be out. I want them you know, to have 24 seven forage. So sometimes some of those things cost me less like in shavings, but sometimes they cost me more. Hello, my angels. Hi. I wanna walk out and show you Jiminy's composite shoes. I actually just took Bagheera's shoes off last week. I just wanted to see how she was moving barefoot and she did really well. But now we're gonna start trail riding um, a lot more because it's midsummer. So I'm debating if I wanna put them back on, but I just kinda of wanted to get a baseline of where she was at. Not that she had like issues or anything, but she's older, she's like 28. Um, so I was just trying to do everything I could to give her more cushion. But like I said, if they can go barefoot, great. Jiminy always just has to have composites on. He has arthritis and he gets around really great. But again, he just needs them. Hey, honeys. Moosh. Hi, baby. I love my little smooshy. You're the best. You're the best, baby. Bagheera, you good girl? Bagheera's actually really fit right now. She is more of a petite mare, I'd like to say. We think she's a Morgan Standard bred, so she has a super high metabolism, but I really like her weight right now because I know she's super fit. I don't want her to gain tons of weight and have fat on her and then be hard on her joints like at 28 years old. So she's doing really well. Jiminy, I wanna show them your shoes. Can I show them your shoes? Okay. So you see, he has composite shoes. He's literally getting them done in a few days. Like he's literally do. All right, so it's hard to tell, but anyways, they're composite shoes. This usually starts to come off like a few days before he's due for his next trim. And it's not a big deal. It's just a hold in impression. But yeah, so these are super expensive. <laughs> and you can see he's always had these cracks ever since I've owned him, but they, they have gotten better. So we just wanna make sure he has all the support he possibly needs. And like I said, they are very expensive and because I do them every three and a half to four weeks, late spring, all summer and early fall, it's just so expensive, but it's totally worth it. I wanna do what's best for him, he needs it. Beautiful Olaf, Mushu, Jafar, Bagheera, Gaston, Arlo, Zazu, you good boy. Next expense, which is also a huge one, and I combine them all together. So we have vet, equine dental, Cairo, and massage. So obviously for vetting, they get their Coggins every year and an exam, and then all of their basic medical needs, of course, right? So that is all included in there. Now, of course, there can be times where obviously the vet needs to come out for other issues. You just never really know what exactly is gonna happen. So this can vary. One year it could be really low, one year it could be astronomical. A horse might need a $10,000 surgery. So I'm just gonna talk about what my average has been. For dental, my horses get their dentals once a year and they get what's called occlusal equilibrium. I highly recommend researching that for horses. It's just, it's awesome. It's pretty expensive per horse, but I definitely think it's worth it. And like I said, they get that one time a year. And then when it comes to Cairo and massage, they get that anywhere from two to six times per year, just depending on their level of training or their individual needs or you know how hard they're working, whatever the case may be. Sometimes it could even be more than six, but on average, at least minimum two times per year, but usually three to four. My total cost for vet, Cairo, massage, and equine dental is $10,200 per year. So in the scheme of everything, it's really not that bad. I have had situations where it's way more, like unfortunately with like Prince Charming, that was extremely expensive, but on average, it's about $10,200 per year. So still a chunk of change, but considering it's 10 horses, that's not that bad. I also want to add in that I will do body work for them as well. Like I've learned a lot from my other equine professionals on things that I can do at home and different stretches. So I will do those in between their Cairo and massage. And that really, really helps a lot. I also want to bring up that I am a saddle fitter. So I am a certified professional and I used to do it 
professionally for other clients, but now I'm so busy. I really don't go out there and do it for clients anymore. I'm pretty much just doing it for myself at this point. Maybe a friend or somebody who's very local and close by to me. It's just very time consuming. But with that being said, it does save me a lot of money because I do not have to pay a saddle fitter to come out and fit 10 horses for me. So that's a big bonus there. And I told myself I wanted to go to school for something. That way I have something else in my back pocket. I have more knowledge on a specific area and it's really just been extremely helpful throughout my horsemanship journey and when it comes to owning and running a horse farm. Yeah, sometimes I'm just like, I don't want to think about the numbers because it's really scary how much I spend on horses each month and each year, which we'll do a grand total at the end. And obviously I am making an income too, which I did talk about that in a different video. It's a little bit outdated at this point because things have grown and expanded, but you can check that out. It's talking about my income sources and a little bit about what I do. So I will link that in the description and I will make an updated one. I plan on doing that in the next couple months because like I said, things have really grown and I wanna give you accurate numbers when it comes to income and what I make. And all of these numbers are legit. Like this is from our taxes on an Excel sheet. Like we keep track of everything. They aren't just guesswork, they're, they're numbers, they're real numbers. Let's talk about sand, yay! Sand, that is another expense. Isn't that interesting? Sand. Hi, honeys. My baby. Look at you. So sand is actually a huge expense because obviously you have to have what's called footing sand in the arena. So I have a indoor arena and an outdoor arena and we buy 2NS sand. Now we do have a little dump truck where we can haul the sand but we also will have someone deliver it as well. But then you have to pay for freight, which is basically like the hauling loading fee. And it's pretty expensive compared to how much the materials actually cost. But the thing is our dump truck is smaller than what their truck is. So sometimes it's just easier to just pay for the big load and get everything at once. So what does sand cost me per year? My outdoor arena is a hundred by 200. And my indoor arena is 50 by 130. My grand total payment when it comes to sand per year is $2,000. So, I mean, it's not horrible, but it's not necessarily like a drop in the bucket either because I'm still a small business. <laughs> but I do love my sand. I get excited about it. I don't know if that's sad or what, but yep, that's what it costs. Baby's hungry. Milk is free. <laughs> Just kidding. Belle. Belle, we feed you good, don't we? Well, hi, honey. This is Esmeralda and Belle. So, Ezzy is now four weeks old. Isn't that insane? Oh, bonky. Goofball. Oh my gosh. I know. You sweet angel. Look at that big booty. It's gonna be thick. Just like mama. You having fun in here? How's your day going? I love you. Oh my gosh, I can't handle how sweet you are. So this was a buy one, get one free when it comes to expenses. Thank you, Belle. <laughs> you are a freebie. She said, well, you're not gonna know how much I cost you later with attitude and training. Just kidding. You're an absolute angel and I love you. So this was my little gift from Belle and I just love her so much. You're so cute. Yes, you were like a party favor. Go to an event and get a party favor. I went to an auction and this is what I got to bring home. I just didn't know it. Oh my gosh, like I can't handle you. You're so cute. I just want to squeeze her. I would literally kiss you right now, but I have bright red lipstick on. So I can't. Aww. So talking about other expenses, I bought this run-in shed this year and the total cost for this new run-in shed 
was $4,300. Hey, you have teeth now. Watch it. They aren't necessarily gummies. Look at those teeth. So yeah, that was, sorry, I bought it last year, but yeah, $4,300 for the run-in shed. So something like that always comes up each year, whether it's the shed or the tractor, or I need another run-in shed or some kind of large purchase. But yes, so that was $4,300. So another huge expense when it comes to horses. Now, whether you're running a professional program or a business or you just have your horses personally, I still think you need to have insurance. So of course I have a lesson program. We do on and off site events. <laughs> Sorry, she is so distracting. Like I love her. I can't even pay attention when I'm standing by you. You're just so cute. So anyways, I'm gonna walk over here. Horses are obviously dangerous and things can happen. So you have to CYA, okay? Look that up if you don't know what it means. And we have insurance that essentially covers our buildings. And of course we have commercial liability insurance, commercial equine liability insurance and all of that. And of course it is specified to my program, but I don't have insurance on any of my actual horses. So when we're talking about insurance, we're talking about literally just covering the buildings. It covers the hay and I have liability for my business. And this does not include our home. This is strictly just for the farm. The total cost of insurance per year is $6,000. So it's honestly not that bad considering everything, but it's still, like I said, a chunk of change. And that adds up, you know, 2,000 here, 5,000 here, 8,000 there, it definitely adds up. So that's what we pay per year with insurance. And of course that's gonna vary depending on what you do in regards to your business, how many horses you have, you know, do you have a pool, all of those factors, your geographical location, and no, we do not have a pool, so <laughs> just throwing that out there. But anyways, yeah, so that's what our insurance costs per year. This is a massive expense here. Our guard dog, Koa, bad to the bone. I'm just kidding. You're the friendliest dog on earth. You're actually a terrible guard dog, and you're basically just here to make people feel better. No, I love my baby Koa. He's the best puppy ever. <laughs> Here you go, boy. I painted my garden shed. I mean, it doesn't look good, but we're probably gonna like tear it down next year. And it looked even worse than it does now, but I still think it looks way better. So yeah, we just did that. Also painted some of the fences. We're gonna finish them. Front of the shed, it looks a little bit better. The thing with the shed is like I said, we're probably gonna tear it down in a year or two, but it looked so bad. I'm like, how can we just like patch it up to look a little bit more presentable without dumping money into it? So we just painted it. Also look, our smokehouse roof, working on that, almost done. Here is my dump truck that I was talking about. I bought this from my grandpa. Um, he had passed away and it was on our family and I have a farm. So I was like, I wanna buy it. So this is the one that we'll haul like gravel and sand with. We haven't bought gravel in like years, but like I said, you know how much we pay for sand. And I love this truck so much. I literally took like my high school senior pictures on the hood of this truck. And yeah, and now it's mine. Isn't it crazy how things happen like that? Then we have our tractor, which came with the house. I put that in our um, contract. I was like, um, yeah, can we have the tractor? Cause I don't have one. So we have an international. But the tractor does cost us money in fuel each year. And the tractor is huge when it comes to playing a role in operating the horse farm. Obviously, we put round bales out with it. We smooth the arena out with the tractor. We do various things with it. Like we're always using the tractor. We spread manure, all kinds of stuff. So the total cost of fuel per year for the tractor is $400. So not too terrible, but it's also another expense. I'm not gonna really count the horse trailer as an expense, even though it is one because I already have it, but my trailer is absolutely nothing fancy. I was gonna like order a wrap for it, which I still will probably do um, to make it look better, but I bought this, I don't know, like two, three years ago or something, maybe two years ago, and it was $8,000. So just for those who are looking to, you know, get horses or run a farm or whatever the case may be, you gotta have a trailer and then you gotta have a truck, which nowadays, oh my gosh, trucks are just astronomical in price. I mean, you're looking at 60 to $80,000 for a truck that is new and can haul, you know, a, a trailer, like a, effectively. We have our super old truck over here. It gets the job done. But like I've said in other videos, I just don't wanna go in debt. So that's why I don't have a brand new truck and trailer, 
you know, sporting a hundred, two hundred thousand dollar rig and truck. So I just, again, it's not like totally crappy, but it's not super nice because I don't, I don't want to be like strained and go in debt. But it, a lot of people, they do, they get the, the big truck and trailer and you know, you just can't have everything. I, I love my facility. I'm doing a lot of improvements, which I talked about, but we have a huge one coming up. So I'm very excited to share that with you. I mean, it is huge, huge, huge. So, so pumped to talk to you about it. But I'm going to wait a little bit because we have some things in the works. But anyways, yeah, like there's just so many different things that go into running a farm and people have no idea. And that's exactly why I'm making this video, not only to share like my personal expenses and my journey, but also to show people what goes into it and prepare them. Because I mean, like I knew a little bit when we bought the farm, but I didn't know crap compared to what I know now. And you know, when you sit down and look at the numbers, it's pretty crazy. Are you really still in here? This is Penelope the mini pig. What do we pay you for cleanup crew for grain that the horses drop? So Penelope lives in the house, but she comes out every day with me and we'll just hang out. But she is just the best thing in the world. I actually rescued Penelope from a humane society about three years ago. Literally, I just was riding my horse and I saw this post about her on Facebook. I literally dropped everything, called them. I said, can I come meet her? Like, I want to take her home today. Like I have a farm, but she's going to be in the house, but I have a space for her in case she gets too big, blah, 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 because they didn't know exactly what she was other than a pot belly. So she could literally have gotten to like 300 pounds, but right now she's 85 pounds and she's not going to get bigger than a hundred. That is so small for a pig. Like you really don't get smaller than that. And we feed this girl, but I also am like really careful about not overfeeding her too, just because I don't want her to get arthritis and joint problems. But anyways, I didn't even ask Kyle. I just straight up was like, I got to leave because if I asked him, he'd say no and that would ruin it. So I was like, I don't care. I wanted a pig for like 10 years when I got her. And I told him I was going to Walmart and literally it had been like two hours and he calls and he's like, yeah, where are you? I was like, oh, honey, I'm sorry. I, I could only get bacon at Walmart. And he's like, what? And I sent him a picture and he's like, take her back. And then I brought her home and he was mad for like one second. And then he just melted. I put her in like a little dress and yeah, it, it, the rest is history. Now he's a pig daddy and the best pig daddy ever. Now we're going to talk about my tack and equipment expenses. So what this consists of is saddles, pads, bridles, basically all of my riding equipment. And it's not cheap, <laughs> mainly because I am really big on quality. As a saddle fitter, I don't like riding in junk or seeing horses being ridden in junk tack. And I'm not saying, yeah, you have to have like an $8,000 saddle that you have to be riding in. But I do think it's really important to have tack and saddles that fit correctly for each individual horse. So I do spend good money on all my equipment. So let's head into the tack room and I'll show you. Sorry, it's a little bit of a mess right now because like I said, I have some projects coming up. But anyways, I have a bunch of different types of saddles. I have black country saddles. I have cotton masters. I have Wintex that I've converted to wool. I have all types of saddle pads, really good girth that all have fleece linings. I have really nice bridles, bitless, all of that. Cause again, I want padded, I want quality. More bridles and equipment over here, just a lot of stuff. But again, I have a lesson program and I have 10 horses. And to be completely honest with you, I wouldn't have 10 horses at a time if I didn't have a program too. I'd probably have like five or six because again, my mission is working with horses and then eventually finding them really good homes. And you know, I talk a lot about that. Then I have my Western saddles in here. So I ride in circle wise. I have a beta saddles, a bunch of pads here, and I ride in impact gel saddle pads and a few other ones like Weaver. This is one of my newer saddles. I love it. And just, yeah, a bunch of equipment. I'm actually going to be redoing the tack room. So that's why they look like an absolute like catastrophe right now. So Yes, but there is still more. I cannot wait to tell you about our big projects coming up, which also are very expensive, and I'll talk about those at the time. My grand total for tack and equipment is $10,200. But again, I think it's worth the investment to invest in good tack because if you invest in poor fitting tack or tack that isn't quality, you're going to pay more for it in the long run. 
So obviously to run a equestrian horse facility, you have to have a facility. And with that, you have to either pay in cash or have a mortgage. Here's my house and I live on site. My total cost for my mortgage per year is $25,200. So basically that's just to own the facility and live on site when you really think about it. Now, some people might rent or lease their facilities and that of course can vary depending on the facility. I've heard of 2,000 all the way up to $15,000 per month just for a lease, but of course we own. So that does include the house as well. But that's a huge expense. I mean, you have to own a facility or lease one in order to run it, right? Now, of course, we talked about some major things, but what about all the little things like buckets, wheelbarrows, pitchforks, shampoo, fly spray, all of the miscellaneous barn supplies? That definitely adds up. And of course, if you purchase a facility that you know, you're know you starting to run or you're building a new facility, whatever the case may be, you have to buy all of that supplies. And it's a lot of cost up front when you don't have anything. Like for example, when we moved here, it wasn't necessarily horse ready. We had to fix all the fences. We had to buy all the buckets, the troughs. So all of those different things. On average, I spend $5,000 per year purchasing supplies out of all of those items I said. Like I said, it could be fly masks. It could be buckets. It could be corner feed buckets. It could be troughs. It could be heaters, whatever the case may be, about five grand. And then you also have building materials. Kyle built all of these fences. We're in the process of painting them. So, you know, we have we painted this side, we got to paint the other side, get that done. You have all the gates and all of that type of stuff. So each year we're obviously building something, improving something, multiple things usually. On average, it costs us about $2,883 on average. So of course that can vary. Like I've been saying, we have a massive project coming up that's gonna cost basically a fortune, but I'm very excited about it. So I'll be updating you on that. But yeah, we're just talking about some of the little things that we're fixing like and we do pretty much everything ourselves for the most part so you know like painting the fences or fixing boards or adding gates or like the smokehouse roof that I showed you so yeah just about two thousand eight hundred dollars sometimes like around three thousand of course that can vary but that's the average and then we have workwear where if you're like me you'll wear a riding shirt one day a sweatshirt the next pajamas whatever the case may be leggings you know but I do have to budget for that too because obviously I'm riding, so I need riding clothes. I need working clothes because I'm teaching lessons or training all day or whatever the case may be. Now I need cute outfits for YouTube. No, <laughs> but for real, it does add up. So on average per year, I spend about $1,500 on workwear and attire. And then of course I have to pay for my LLC licensing fee each year, which is really cheap. It's like $50. So that's not bad at all. And I am like an LLC, like I said, and that's just paid annually, so 50 bucks. I also have to pay for advertising as well. When it comes to advertising, I don't pay for ads. Like I don't do any of that. And nowadays I don't even advertise at all because of the YouTube and the community. I don't have to do any advertising, but I do have to pay for my websites and that's $328 per year. And it's still definitely an expense when it comes to running the horse farm because obviously you have to have some sort of website nowadays. So it's not too bad in the scheme of things. I think other people do pay for sponsored ads just depending on what their business is, but the YouTube definitely does help. And obviously I don't have to pay to make videos on YouTube. I get paid to do that. So it's kind of cool. But guess what? We also have the actual cost of owning horses because who would have thought that you have to have horses to own a horse farm, right? That's crazy. So I guess you're probably wondering maybe how much do I pay for horses per year? And that is a cost because literally, like I said, you have to have horses in order to run a farm or to do a business regarding horses in these terms. And they don't just fall out of the sky unless they're Ezzy, then they just pop out of bell and ta-da. But you know what I mean? Okay. So on average per year, I spend $20,000 when it comes to purchasing new horses. I would say that obviously can vary. So nowadays horses are very expensive so i mean it's going to be probably a lot more like this coming year and looking at last year but i spent 20 grand and i, I mean i don't i don't go and buy like tons and tons of new horses like all the time i would say i get maybe two to three new horses a year 
for what I do, that's not that much. And on average per horse, I spend anywhere nowadays five to 13,000. And then I work with them. And then sometimes I can end up selling them for more. Sometimes I don't, it, it just really depends. But like I said, in one of my last videos, I know what the horse market is now. And some of the horses that I will eventually be selling, not like right this minute, but maybe in the next six months to two years, if the market is similar, they're not gonna be cheap because I've put years and years into them and they are phenomenal horses. So again, remember, I am a small scale farm, okay? We only have 10 horses and I do have a great program and a decent sized one considering the size of our facility and the horses that I have. These costs and expenses are definitely gonna depend on the size of the facility and all of the different variables that are involved. But for just my average, you know, facility, smaller scale, we still have pretty high expenses. And now we are ready for our grand total of what it costs to run a horse farm and take good care of my horses for an entire year. And that total is $88,388 per year which breaks down to $7,365 per month. So when you step back and look at that, that is a huge, huge expense. And that's why people just don't understand when it comes to owning horses, what really goes into it. And that can be said for people who board horses, people who are taking lessons or leasing, whatever the case may be. It's not just the care, like you have to upkeep the facility too. You have to own or pay for the facility. You have to maintain and upkeep the facility. You have to pay for insurance. You have to pay for utilities. And then you have to, of course, take care of all of the horses. And think about all of the labor that goes into that too. So Kyle and I do everything ourselves. I mean, I work my tushy off, right? Like I work really, really hard because it's so expensive to pay people and I still wanna be able to make some type of income, right? And like I said later, I will make an updated video regarding what my income is because it has increased, which is awesome because I've been working so hard to get to where I am today but the overhead is insane. And I feel like that's why people in the horse industry can be a little bit cutthroat in regards to when they're running their business, it's their way or the highway, which I've kind of become like that more so over time, not in a bitter way, but just because I just know what it takes to run it. And unless you do it, you don't understand it. You know, you can be sympathetic towards it, but unless you're living this lifestyle and doing the daily hustle and paying for it, you have no idea what goes into it. And I'm very picky about my clientele nowadays. I'm very picky about what my horses can and cannot do within my riding program because I know what it takes to maintain a horse that is in work. And I don't overwork my horses at all. Like I said, they get to have breaks. They are not overused. They get to do a variety of different things and disciplines to keep them mentally and physically happy, healthy, and sound. But over time, I've learned just what's acceptable and what's not. And I stick to that because I'm the one who's working hard and paying for it to maintain them. And even when it comes to allowing other people to ride them, like same thing, I have to make sure that everything is taken care of so that they can come and enjoy riding the horse. So you have to have like strict rules and limitations. And I just think people think riding is very expensive or boarding a horse is very expensive. And it is, it is expensive to ride horses and to board them, but it doesn't compare to the cost that it takes to operate and run the facility and then you want to tag on like making some sort of income for all of the effort that you're putting into it. Kyle and I used to board horses in the beginning and I learned very quickly after a couple years that that was not what I wanted to do because you put in so much money and we weren't even breaking even with that and obviously I'm not trying to be like greedy but like I said when you bust your butt like you have to make a living like you have to survive and I just knew that wasn't going to work for us. So then I switched to riding lessons which I love and I do make some money with the program however like I said and like you know now the overhead is so crazy expensive and then you have to sit back and go well what if this horse becomes unsound like what if they just trip in the pasture or do something silly right like so many things and so many variables are out of your control so you always have to like keep that in mind and it's insane it really is like I am constantly constantly sitting here thinking about horses whether it's YouTube or the program or you know what my future plans are and training and all of those factors right so at the end of the day you just have to like really want this lifestyle if you're going to do this it's not a casual thing it is 
your everything. Like I eat, sleep, and breathe and sweat horses, okay? That is all I do, but I love it. So for me, all of the thoughts and all of the effort and work is worth it because it's my passion. But if it's not your passion, just don't do it because it's not worth it. Like, it's just not, but I personally love it. And I'm just being realistic. I don't want to tell anybody not to follow their dreams. I'm actually huge on telling people to follow their dreams, but just know that that's what you actually want and not just infatuation. So hopefully you understand a little bit more about what horses cost and what it takes to run a farm. Hopefully I explained it enough and I broke it down enough for you to have a general idea. And hopefully it will help you in your horsemanship journey if you are considering this. And I don't want to be discouraging either because if if you do it the right way, like the way I have it set up, Kyle is extremely handy so he can fix things. He can help me with certain things. And then I basically do everything myself because I'm physically capable and I have a high energy level. So I'm able to accomplish mostly everything pretty much solo. I do have an assistant as well who helps periodically with lessons, but when it comes to everything else, I'm running it. I really hope that this video was eye-opening for you and enlightening and I hope that you maybe learned a little bit and enjoyed you know kind of coming around the farm and listening to how much money I spend so <laughs> it's actually really crazy once I sit there and look at it and add it all up I'm like wow okay yeah definitely love horses. So, okay, horse lovers, make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe to the channel, turn on your notifications so you don't miss anything Free Spirit Equestrian, and I'll see you next time, horse lovers.